Now, once again, Titanium Hillary has survived. Hi, this is Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, there's a headline in the Washington Post today that says, Justice Department dismisses Clinton-related inquiry championed by Trump. This is a probe that was initiated by former uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, where he appointed um, a, a deputy, essentially, to look into a variety of things, including the Clinton Foundation, um, the fact of the uh, circumstances surrounding the sale of Uranium One to a Russian firm, uh, Hillary Clinton's private email and how that probe was handled by the FBI. And the upshot of it is, Bill, uh, that the same outcome as James Comey reached has been reached here, although there's much less information. As you remember, uh, former FBI Director James Comey made a public announcement that Hillary Clinton had been sloppy or had done things inappropriately or uh, improperly, and then said that there was no ground for filing charges. In this case, the Justice Department doesn't even want to talk about it, but this probe has has quietly just gone away. Um, and I guess, I guess, Bill, it's it's kind of the same uh, wall that conservatives keep bumping their head up against. They keep expecting that people are going to see, especially law enforcement officers, are going to see how corrupt Hillary Clinton and that whole uh, group around her is. And yet, repeatedly, it doesn't happen. Um, is this just because everybody in the Justice Department and in the legal structure of the federal government is completely sold out and a swamp creature, so to speak? Well, that's, that, that last statement is certainly not true. Um, I read a, a very uh, moving email from a, a currently serving FBI agent who said that he just did the rough math, the total number of agents and the number of people that were involved in this kind of corruption that James Comey brought to the agency is one half of 1% or something in that neighborhood. The real number is probably a little bit higher than that, but without question, the vast number of people working in the Justice Department are, are patriotic Americans who... Um, who in, in many cases, if not most cases, have uh, deeply resented um, and been greatly angered by the distrust that's been brought on those agencies by people like James Comey. Uh, as far as the Hillary Clinton thing goes, um, it's one of three things, I think. It's either they've dismissed this probe or let this probe die because there is a much larger, more intricate uh, set of charges that are being prepared that link Comey and Clinton and and so on. If this investigation dealt primarily with Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation, it's possible that uh, this was just basically let out to pasture because there are there are a larger set of parentheses coming for um, Mrs. Clinton's uh, deeds. That's one possibility. The second possibility is that um, is that for whatever reasons, it was determined that going after Hillary Clinton would be bad for the country, would be, you know, I don't know, riots in the streets if Hillary Clinton is in, indicted by uh, by Donald Trump's Justice Department, some some kind of a political consideration or so on. And then the only third explanation is that there are, in fact, a class of untouchable people in this country, an, an aristocracy of um, high-level bureaucrats uh all of whom are Democrats, not because Democrats are are uh, capable of evil when Republicans aren't, but only because the news media provides this cloak of invisibility for high-level Democrats and encourages them, in fact, almost compels them to do whatever they want to. So either there are um, bigger things coming down the pike, which would be good and, and what I hope for, or for one or two reasons, she gets to walk away with this, which is not just disappointing on a personal level from I'd like to see her in jail, but which undermines the the fundamental belief that underpins this entire society, which is that the rule of law is supreme and that nobody's above the law. Bill, it occurs to me that there are two other possible evaluations of the outcomes to date. Uh, number one is that Hillary Clinton and those around her are shrewd enough to be able to insulate themselves from the consequences of their illegal deeds. And so it doesn't matter how much the FBI or anybody else looks into it. They're just not going to find anything, even though Clinton is culpable. And then I the, don't believe that. Then the other possibility is that Hillary Clinton actually didn't break any laws. Don't and do that either. despite the fact that um, that all conservatives, not all conservatives, I shouldn't say that, but many, many conservatives believe she did. And many thought that, that uh, Director Comey's statement about her activities was one that cried out for uh, charges uh, that maybe there's just 
not as much there there as conservatives would like, and it's really more uh, political anger that is fueling our, our ability to look at this in a, in a non-biased way. I think both of your um, uh, contentions there are, are clearly mistaken, if you'll pardon me for being so blunt. And I think they're clearly mistaken by the initial report launched by James Comey, uh, who, who got up in front of national television cameras and indicted her for 45 minutes, gave a compelling list of, of, of numerous uh, individual cases where she specifically said things along the lines of, I did not have classified emails on the server. Uh, turns out she did. Every one of those emails, and there were some thousands of them that, that were not supposed to have been on that private server, every single one of them, as I understand the law, could be considered a count, uh, one single count of a violation of the law. And and as I've been saying from the beginning of this email scandal, the, the two statutes in question Fundamentally, the, the, the groundwork for the two statutes in question, first one says, uh, if you, um, if you uh, misuse uh, government information or, or reports, if you try to erase them, if you try to, uh, you know, that kind of thing, that's, that's a felony and disbars you from uh, future uh, service in the United States government under any kind. And failure to include all of them at the end of your tenure is also a uh, a separate statute, but also felony. So there is simply no question at all, zero, none, that she's committed uh, these felonious acts. And when you get into the depths of just how badly she might have damaged the national security of the United States, that's where you have to start to speculate. And I'm certainly not going to do that. But without question, the director of the FBI prior to the 2016 election came out and specifically said that, yes, we found evidence of all of these charges. And I remember in the hours after Comey's speech, which, by the way, having had one or two friends in the FBI, was watched that that Comey's initial uh, report where he spent, what was it, 40 minutes, 45 minutes listing every single transgression that Hillary Clinton had made. The FBI agents and the field agents that I knew were cheering when they heard this. And when Comey said, we don't recommend prosecution, no reasonable prosecutor would take the case. They were absolutely dumbfounded and then started throwing phones against the walls. Bill, can I, can I just interject for a minute sure. here? Because even as you look at a situation like that, and I think this, this comes up repeatedly um, in our political process and especially around investigations, whether that is the probe into President Trump's uh, alleged collusion with the Russian government or whether it's what Hillary Clinton uh, is alleged to have done, um, that conservatives are willing to accept the conclusions of Director Comey when he says that Hillary Clinton, you know, in various ways did things that were sloppy or even unethical or uh, appeared to be uh, at odds with what she was saying. And yet, so we accept those conclusions, but we don't accept the conclusion where he says uh, there's nothing worth prosecuting under the law here. Why is it that we kind of take an a la carte approach to statements like Comey's? I suspect the main reason is that most Americans are capable of reading and understanding a simple English sentence. But that not the be... sentence where Comey says she shouldn't be charged. No, the sentence I'm talking about are the sentences that are that are outlet that are laid out in the specific felony codes that talk about a failure to return all records is a felony, and any attempt to alter those records is a second felony, punishable uh, by a separate uh, fine or conviction, and furthermore disqualifying you from holding any office, including junior assistant clerk in the office of the United States government. Those are the sentences that I can read. And this is why conservatives are, are so furious about this. If, if James Comey had been able to put together the kind of list that he read aloud um, dealing with Hillary Clinton, if, if, if Robert Mueller had come back with a report that listed in the kind of detail that James Comey's uh, assessment of Hillary Clinton's um, uh, transgressions uh, occurred, Th then you would have an entirely different attitude from me about this, but but that's not the case. The the assertions against Donald Trump were assertions. The collusion with Russia was an assertion. The Ukrainian thing's an assertion. All the grounds for impeachment are assertions. There's no evidence for any of it. What James Comey did that day is, in fact, the most remarkable thing I've seen in, in several years. And it's only recently that I've begun to really look at the character of the man, which is unknown to the public before then, and rightfully so. The, the, the 
the kind of person that makes up the director of the FBI is not something that should be widely known to the American people. I'm not saying it should be secret, but if you're going to be the director of the FBI or the CIA, I'd kind of prefer it if you weren't on talk shows all the time talking about, you know, how you didn't have a dog when you were growing up. So as Comey continues to make statements, it becomes more and more clear to me that this guy, uh, forget my personal interpretation of, of him being a pathological narcissist. The fact remains from the evidence of what we saw on videotape, which is available to anybody, that just during that simple statement, just during the, that 45 minute statement, you saw the, the fundamental narcissism and arrogance of James Comey, who would come out and basically try to have it both ways. He's trying to be the good boy scout head of the FBI. He's been assigned a task to uncover irregularities, and he uncovers 45 minutes worth of them. And he's also trying to be the political ball player who's opposed to Donald Trump and the American people and their, and their, uh, the, the wrong choice that they made in 2016. So basically, after listing all of these things, he then says, however, we don't recommend prosecution. And, and if you look at the expression on his face, you get that same kind of that same kind of smugness, like I am so much smarter than everybody else. The only time I remember seeing that face, uh, that kind of expression was when uh, John McCain went on the floor of the Senate to cast the deciding vote in favor of Obamacare. What's the maverick going to do? Well, Bill, what is let's, let's focus in on this because I, I, my intention is not to uh, to mount another assault on former FD, FBI Director James Comey, because here's the problem with that. He's not the only one. He's not the only one in the federal government who has looked into these situations and failed to find something. In this case now, the, the Washington Post reportage now is about uh, Jeff Sessions. Of course, Jeff Sessions was relieved of duty by President Trump. Appointee John Huber, who was then a U.S. attorney from uh, Utah. And here's what's going to be said about this, Bill. This guy started his uh, U.S. attorneyship under the Obama administration, was was maintained and continued under the Trump administration. From previous experience of watching these kind of personnel decisions and discussions around them in the public, some people are going to say, oh, of course, he was an Obama, Obama appointee. No wonder he didn't find anything worth appointing uh, Hillary Clinton for. Other people will say, well, wait a minute, President Trump kept him on. Then the original people will come back and say, well, President Trump either didn't fully understand who these people were, or he likes to keep his enemies close. Um, and therefore he allowed Jeff Sessions to appoint this guy who he knew was a bad apple and wouldn't find anything against the Clintons because he'd been completely co-opted. It's a, it's a circular argument that becomes difficult to maintain the more the more people get involved in this. But do you think that's the conservative response is now gonna be, well, of course, John Huber didn't find anything. He's Barack Obama's handmaiden. Since I believe in principles above politics, I think it is absolutely fair to say that if you're a defender of Hillary Clinton and this report comes back with no significant findings, then you certainly have the same uh, right to say that this is exonerating in the same way that uh, conservatives would say that Donald Trump was exonerated by the Mueller report. I think that's I don't I don't believe that's the actual case, but certainly since I'm committed to the rule of law, if 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 conservatives are going to claim that, see, they launched this big investigation that Mueller launched, they didn't find anything, therefore he didn't do it. It certainly seems um, fair that if if a, a similar investigation comes back on Hillary Clinton and turns up nothing, as, a, as apparently the case may be, it certainly seems fair for Clinton supporters to make the same claim. I don't, I don't, I don't put my politics above my principles, but I can say in regard to what your what your summation was on that one, that I think everybody in the country, with the exception of the actual players, and I'm including Donald Trump in this, I don't think anybody in the country, certainly not me, had any idea of the level of corruption that was uh, going on in the Justice Department, uh, the, the FBI, which is part of the Justice Department, the uh, the CIA, IRS, um, and and so my initial reaction to this when we started this segment was. It's possible that they're going to let this investigation simply go because they are casting a wider net with Bill Barr and that 
they want to keep these eggs separate. And that to that point, and let's, and let's end with this idea, because to that point, Bill Barr has appointed U.S. Attorney John Durham, who I believe is out of Connecticut, um, to look into the genesis or the origins of the investigation into President Trump's alleged uh, collusion or cooperation with Russia in the lead up to the 2016 election. And pres the president himself has kind of turned his attention to that investigation. And so this this other one with John Huber is just kind of going by the wayside. It all makes me wonder, Bill, whether it ever will be possible to have the American public look at the federal justice system and say, justice can be had there, or if they will always look at it and say, both sides are so utterly politically corrupt that this whole thing is a multi-million dollar game and the only people who get hurt by it are the taxpayers who are funding investigations that can't possibly come to a righteous conclusion. First of all, I don't think it's fair to say that both sides are equally corrupt, not because uh, Republicans are made out of gold and Democrats are made out of some other substance, uh, but only because the media is a one-way check valve. The media is con which is, the media only does its job when it comes to Republican politicians. So since the media is is poking its nose into every single thing that Republicans could possibly do, let's just ask Sarah Palin or, or Donald Trump if, if there's anything to that, or Brett Kavanaugh for that matter. It's a it's a one-way valve. Nobody's watching what the Democrats do. The entire Obama administration was essentially a giant conspiracy. That basically, when I say a conspiracy, it was basically running the government in a way that they thought they would never lose another election again. And they did lose one. And so now what we find is all of this stuff is 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 starting to come to light. And when I say that it's possible that, that they're letting well, this one Bill, hang let on, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Because it's not coming Let me to finish, light. Scott. Let me finish. It, it's possible that that what what's happening here with this with this uh, this report that you mentioned it's kind of like a subset of the larger thing. I'm not a super expert on the law, but if if the initial investigation basically dealt with Hillary Cl Hillary Clinton's connection to the Clinton Foundation and and Russia and all the rest of it, it's possible and I certainly pray that this is the case that Bill Barr is putting together a case that that connects Hillary Clinton to the to the um, attempt to uh, create this this story about Russia connected to Barack Obama and his spying on Donald Trump. It's possible that he's putting together a much more complex case and that Hillary Clinton's uh, connection to her corrupt foundation is simply a part of that. It's kind well, of the that, way Newtonian physics- It wasn't that physics. focused though. It wasn't that well, focused. The, the Huber's uh, mandate from uh, Attorney General, former Attorney General Jeff Sessions was to look into a variety of areas and recommend any potential uh, charges or follow-up action in that, including the Clinton Foundation, including Uranium One, including her private uh, use of a private email server and the FBI's uh, access to that private email or, failure, or, or lack of access. Um, and, but, and so but not, it was a broader range of things. But the, the overall question, but, Bill, but isn't on the particulars. But not including her relationship to the post-election attempt to to frame Donald Trump for Russian collusion. That was outside the scopes of that investigation. Well, that's wasn't because it? he was appointed before that really got underway. <laughs> so oh, he was he, appointed before point, it became Bill, public. There, what you're saying is that the only time we can ever trust the Justice Department is when Republican appointees are completely in charge of it, in essence. Not that the Republicans are perfect, but that any time there's even one Democrat in there involved in one of these probes, the results are tainted. The results are tainted because, yeah, that's essentially what I'm saying. Because what I'm saying is, the, the past 20 years has shown me, especially the last uh, 10 years, has shown me that the media, which is supposed to root out corruption and all of these abuses of power, is so ideologically twisted that they only do it towards one party. That keeps Republicans honest. As I want to say again, just so nobody's misunderstanding me, it's not that they're made out of uh, that Republicans are not capable of corruption in terms of, of their own desire for power and so on. It's simply that the media does their job when there are Republicans in power. When the Democrats are in power, the, the, the news media does not only not investigate, they they sit on stories. They they don't report them. And by not reporting them, they're giving the rest of the country social proof that these things didn't happen. James Comey admitted that she had a number of classified emails on her server. That's beyond dispute. 
That is a violation of federal law. It's a felony. James Comey admitted that she used software like Bleachbit to, to, to try to delete some of these records. That is a separate felony. I can read you the statutes. I don't have them in front of me. If it turns out that that is no longer grounds to, to prosecute somebody because of their political connections, then yes, you're right. Then people's faith in the Justice Department and in the entire idea of justice in America is is tremendously, if not fatally, undermined. And I suppose time will only tell whether or not this woman gets away with it. But the thing I would like to close on by saying is whether she gets away with it legally or not, and the, the jury's still out on that one, if you'll pardon the expression, I do think that I cannot imagine a more perfect hell for Hillary Clinton to be in than the one that she's made for herself. If she were sent to jail, she'd be a martyr and 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 you know, people be rioting in the streets, but for her to simply have to live with this and every few months come up with some new excuse, more hairdressers supported her than, um, than non-hairdressers, by the way, you may not know that. Um, uh, it's one of the many other, uh, excuses that she's claimed, but in any event, Scott, there's no question that these laws were violated. So now the question will be, is somebody gonna pay for them, yes or no? If the answer is no, then we know we have an aristocracy, a ruling class that is above the law, not beholden to the law. And then it's time for the American people to decide whether or not they want to enforce their end of the social compact, the bargain. And the bargain is very simple. We agree to abide by the laws that we that are made by our representatives that we send to Washington and to our state capitals and so on. The reciprocal part of this agreement is that those laws apply to everybody, including the people who make those laws. If we're to find out now that the people that we send to Washington of whatever party are above the law, then we are no longer bound to obey the law. That's how I understand the, the fundamental natural law argument about, about uh, representative government. So they will uh, reap uh, what they sow and and the people that, that are starting to get the most upset about this are the people who are the slowest to come to a boil. The good, decent people out there, hardworking people, not, they're not political animals. They're not people who are constantly on the streets protesting. They're just hardworking people, pay their taxes, uh, and, and, and have a general trust in the government. But the faith of those people, the backbone of this country, the working backbone of this country is the faith of those people is being extremely, uh, tested uh, by this, by the actions of, of uh, Hillary Clinton and others. And, and time is only going to tell whether or not justice does come riding to the rescue or whether or not she and Bill, uh, who have, you know, needless to say, a number of, of reputable assault and rape charges against them, all of it. Are they going to pay yes or no? I don't know. I do think I'm going to know by 2024. Um, but if nothing's happened by the time Donald Trump leaves office, then I think that will be an answer in itself. Important conversations like these are made possible by the members at BillWhittle.com, by our friends at the Patriot Post, America's News Digest, and by some faithful patrons over at Patreon at patreon.com slash BillWhittle. And we are grateful for all their cooperation with this and their promotion of it. Um, if you'd like to join and become a member at BillWhittle.com, you just go to that website and click the Become a Member link. In addition, if you've not already signed up for our Caribbean cruise, May 15th through the 18th, it's a three-night cruise aboard the Royal Caribbean Navigator of the Seas. We'll stage these kinds of conversations along with our other program, uh, Right Angle, and Bill's show, The Stratosphere Lounge. And it'll not all be serious political discussion, although that's an important part of it. There'll be a lot of fun and laughter too, a lot of informal time for you to mix with your fellow members and with your beloved hosts here. So uh, go to BillWhittle.com and click on that cruise ship to find out more, or you can go to BillWhittleCruise.com. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members for making this possible.